Hello everyone, welcome back, this is Adam. In the last episode, we've learned about security groups and how we can use those groups to secure our networks. Today, we will learn about how to route our traffic and control the flow of the traffic within Azure networks. Stay tuned. Let's talk about routing in Azure and specifically what are user-defined routes. Because routing is a process of finding, selecting a path between two or more servers across one or multiple networks. In Azure, routing is set up by default. That means if we have two servers, one, a web server, and second, an API server, both located in the same virtual network in two separate subnets. If you would try to ping or connect from the web server to the API server, there would be a route set up for that already. If also you would want to connect to the internet from the web server, again, the route is already set up. As Azure by default creates an internal routing table and adds all the default routes in that table so that machines when provisioned can already connect to each other and to the internet with no issues at all. But if you want to change that behavior, this is where user-defined routes come in play. Let's say we have a third server called NVA. NVA stands for Network Virtual Appliance. This is simply a specific optimized virtual machine for certain tasks. In this case, this is a virtual machine image that was created with a firewall inside. So we can use this virtual machine to inspect all of the traffic before it will reach our internal servers. In this case, we can create something called a route table. Route table allows us to manage and override the default routes in Azure by creating our own routes. For example, by adding one route, we can affect how web server connects to the API server by redirecting the traffic to the NVA, which will inspect the traffic and forward or deny that traffic to the API server. If you want, we can add one more route to affect the traffic going to the internet, which will again go through the firewall if we want to. I've recreated this scenario in Azure. This is where I have one virtual network, three subnets, one called private with our API server, one called DMZ with our NVA, and one called public with our web server. And I will use route tables in Azure to redirect the traffic from the web server to API through an NVA server. I already have open remote desktop session with my web API, which I can prove to you by opening PowerShell and typing environment computer name. As you can see, this is our web server. And if I would use a trace route command and type API, you would see that we are able to directly connect to our API server, which is located at this IP. And it was only one hop, right? That means we were able to directly connect to our API server. To change that, we can go to Azure, where I already set up a route table resource. I can find it in my resource group by navigating to my NVA routing resource group. And I have a lot of resources in here, but the one that I'm looking for is called route table. And I need to do two things. I need to go to subnets and associate this with a subnet where my virtual machine is located so that all the traffic that is going out of the subnet will be routed according to my route table. That's why I will go to virtual network, select the virtual network where my servers are located, select the subnet. In this case, this is the public subnet. So all the traffic that is going from this public subnet will be subject to our route table. Additionally, I need to add a route. Click on add and provide a name. In this case, I will call this route demo. I also need to add address prefix, which is our destination IP address that we want to override the route for. So in this case, on the second tab, I see that I want to override the traffic that is going to our API server, which is located in the private subnet. I just copy paste the address space of our private subnet. The next hop type we want to override by redirecting this traffic to the virtual appliance. So we select virtual appliance and we need to provide the address of the virtual appliance, which in my case on the third tab, our NVA server has an address of 10.0.2.5. So I just copy this address and go back to the route table and press OK. There's a space in here. Just make sure this is correct and hit OK. And we need to wait now for about one or two minutes for this to take an effect. And let me go back to my web server and trace the route to our API server once again. And in just a couple of seconds, we should see that our server was still reached, but there were two hops this time. 
One was to our NVA located at 10025. And then our NVA redirected the traffic to our destination, which is our API server. And this is how easy you can override the traffic in Azure with route tables. So to summarize, user-defined routes are a way for a customer to create custom user-defined static routes in Azure, so-called UDRs. And they are designed to override the default routing system in Azure or add entirely new routes. All of that is managed through a resource in Azure called Route Table. And those route tables are associated with zero or more virtual network subnets. So you can have one route table and reuse it across multiple subnets. All the materials for this episode can be found under episode 22 on my website. Now that we know how to route the traffic in Azure, in the next episode we'll cover Azure Firewall and how this service helps us to secure our network even further. For this episode we're done. If you want to follow to the next episode, simply hit the icon on the side or follow the playlist. If you like my work, support the channel by subscribing, liking and commenting. And see you in the next one.